Father, I thank you that we've gotten to the last chapter of the book of Luke this morning. We all, we all know the story. You know, this is not new to us. Kind of being amazing when you correlate it with deliverance. And how we've read it from the other two gospels. And now we're, we're at the end of Luke and we're going to go into John tomorrow. The resurrection of Jesus. And Lord, help us here today. It's more like, you know, when I go back and I reflect on the other Gospels and the synopsis of the Gospels, this is so detailed. Even on the road to Emmaus. Let me start by just reading the Word of God and see where God takes us, brothers and sisters. Because it's a lot of eyewitness. Just a little bit of Jesus here speaking, even though all scripture is from God. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, there came unto the sepulcher, the grave, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And of course, we know it's the women. And what a different approach this is for our sisters in Christ, because if if you never knew that you've been called to be an evangelist, this is the, the greatest part of the Bible that teaches women they got a very important part in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. So many times I've told people over the years that it was a woman that rebuked me when I was a young man. And she was a pretty fired up little believer. And she hit me so hard. It's in my memory banks, my subconscious. You don't even know God and you don't serve God. How prophetic was that? Because she was, she was telling the truth, people. And I'm six foot four. I'm a big guy. For, I mean, a little woman, probably about five foot two. Who knows? She was pounding on my desk. She was adamant about Jesus Christ and the fact that I didn't know it. I bet she's smiling if she's not on this planet right now and she's sitting up in heaven and she's saying, wow, God, praise the Lord. How many times do we reflect on somebody's praying for us? You know, how many times do you witness to someone and you go back in the secret place and you fall on your knees? Well, here's these women and they're going to anoint from in their hearts, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because they were believers. They actually saw the miracles he did when he was walking the earth. Can you imagine? You know, I got these stones on my property. I couldn't move them. And, I, you know, I've been here for 25 years. And I think about that. A handful of women. There was a stone, and I always go back to good humor, that all the demons in hell couldn't stop the one angel from rolling back the stone. You know, it's a spiritual illustration of who God is and what the kingdom of God is all about. But these women found the stone was rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Almost like you can reflect on the good things and the goodness of God when you go through what we say in uh, deliverance ministries, as when reports come back from what people witness. And, and it, it, it rings in my heart on, on the men's conference, this last one, what Gerald and Jason were giving me an eyewitness account of what they witnessed with the enemy on the rug. And all the men they had to have to hold down the one young man and the demon of LGBT. And I'm saying it just to exercise the supernatural here well it's just like the angels these women saw angels 
you know. My brother saw a manifestation of devils inside a young man who is a Christian looking for help. So don't think a, a human being can't get help even today. My second deliverance when I was younger was a homosexual from a Catholic high school in Bayonne, New Jersey, who was tormented by homosexual spirits. So this whole thing with supernatural, nobody could take my heart out of what God has taught me through the years. Doesn't matter whether you want to hear it or not, I'm speaking it. Because a lot of Christians don't exercise their faith in Jesus's ministry. They're passive. And you don't see the miracles because of passivity. It came to pass as they were much perplexed. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth. They said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke about you unto you? When he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. Well, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Sinful men. Evil spirits in the people. It's not the person. That's where agape love comes in from God in our hearts when we know the truth. You know, and. Most people don't, don't really exercise their faith by praying every day or praying until there's breakthrough. I mean, there's so many in, illustrations in the Gospels. I think older people that have been studying the Word of God, and the more you study God's Word, the more you really want to tune into God because you've lived a life where you've seen everything else in the world and nothing is that important? But these women, they were with Jesus. And that's what blows me away when I, I read the end of this book, especially in Luke. Because it states what Christ said prior in the Gospels. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And the women remembered his words. It says, and they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Remember now, Judas already, he already committed suicide. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other woman that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. That's why it said 11. And their words seem to them as idle tales, and they believe them not. In other words, his disciples, who he had spoke all this to, did not want to believe the sisters that were the first evangelists of the risen, risen Lord. And that's why I always go back to the sisters. There's a lot of sisters in the church that God's raised up to be bold like lions. I met one before I got saved, and I know that little tiger was probably praying for me. And I always tell the story, you know, my, when my wife was, when I met my wife, she showed me a card that someone tipped her with. And it, and it had a little salvation message. And yet, even though my wife, when I met her, she wasn't saved, she still had that card in her possession, so to speak. And it makes me think about the word of God, how it doesn't return void when you're exercising your faith in Christ for his kingdom. Their words seem to them as idle tales, they believe them not. Then arose Peter, as is the apostle Peter, who had denied him three times, 
ran unto the sepulcher, stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed. In other words, the linen that he was buried in was laying there like an empty rag, wondering in himself is that which was come to pass. So now we, we get to the walk here on the, the road to Anamus. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score, score four longs. And they walked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. They didn't even recognize him. Remember, God's in control. And when, when, I, when I read this every time, I don't know how to put it. I don't know how to take it. I'm just reading God's word here. But he says, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And Jesus spoke to them. He says, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one with them said, whose name was Cleopas, answering unto him, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? In other words, word of mouth was a a way of communication. And that, that had to be a very, you know, you go back a couple of thousand years, that had to be a big, a big event. The scourging, the, the mocking of a man that performed miracles, who there was no malice, no guile. All he was doing was doing good. And yet the people and the religious crucified him beat him to a pulp, you know, all of us that are on pulpits, when we talk about Christ, his own mother didn't know, and said unto him, what things, and they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, and they acknowledged him, they said, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, even the Jewish people acknowledged him as a prophet, someone that spoke the word. He was lifted up as being a good person. Just like the thief said yesterday, he didn't deserve anything of what he received. But here we are thousands of years later, we're understanding he did it for the salvation of all of us. Not just us, everyone that believes in what he did at that cross. You know, I, I looked into that dictionary, appropriation mean, meant he died for every one of our sins. Not for one or two, but for every one that anyone ever committed. That's pretty deep when you, you think about the spiritual of who Jesus Christ is. And, and the faith of believing in the Son of God, God's plan for man, is instilled in each and every one of our hearts. And the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Now, I, I'm just reading scripture. But I'm also very heartfelt because I love the Lord. And I'm sad. Because a lot of people say they love God. And in the Gospels, Jesus said to Peter, he says, Peter, do you love me? And he said it three times. And I think about that a lot. See, if you really love God and the word became flesh, you'd have to really love the word of God too. And if you love God's word, that's when you can become a real disciple, not a wannabe. It's, it's all spiritual, brothers and sisters. I can't emphasize how much we need to walk in the spirit because God is spirit. 
it's taken me many years to even learn how to take my baby steps. And I grieve every day when I see things going on in people's lives that shouldn't be going on anymore. And it's simple. You got to walk with the king. You know, the Bible says that he allows the tormentors to chastise us. Well, God's in control of everything. When you wake up to that fact, you might draw a little closer to God so he can draw close to you. That's how simple walking with the king is all about. It's an exercise of faith. Let me get back to this or I'll never get through it today. You know, I'm, I'm talking to you from my heart. And, you know, it, don't, it doesn't matter if I talk or someone else talks to you about the word of God. You can talk to yourself, read the Bible. That's what I did years ago. And I'm still doing it today. It's like Ernie says, you get up every day, give me Jesus. The only way you're going to get Jesus is for you to sit down and be quiet and listen to him. And make application in your own life. You're not going to give me Jesus. He's personal. You either read it and believe it. Or you read it and walk the other way. And there's a lot of people that walk the other way, even in church. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, to the day is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and a certain woman also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. In other words, they were astonished at what the women witnessed to them. And I'm not being prideful here, but man, I was over astonished what that little woman said to me at my desk in a company that I owned. And I'll never forget it. And I, it's, it's part of my own testimony because a few weeks later, I didn't own that company anymore because I mocked God. You know, and probably the best thing that ever happened to me, the fear of the Lord began to happen and I ended up getting saved. All because of a woman witnessing to me. And you know, a lot of people think I hate women. I don't hate women at all. There's just an order in the word of God. I was talking to Jan about that yesterday. There's some things good pastors will say, and there's some things men will say. And, and we learned in War on the Saints that Satan always gets in with a little leaven. So yeah, there's some good stuff coming out of some pulpits. Especially when it's to the word of God, there's, there's pastors out there that stand on the word of God. And there's pastors out there that deny the word of God as written. That's a decision only you can make with God. I can't make it for anybody. If you believe the word became flesh, Jesus Christ is Lord, and you believe that the apostles were given the 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 teachings from Christ himself and passed it on to the churches, then you'd have to somewhat believe the word of God. That's how simple it is. If the simplicity of Christ is addressed, that you just believe in Jesus and receive the word of God as written, you'll be okay. That's why it says all scriptures for teaching, correcting, and training us in God's righteousness, because the word has been inspired by God, given to the men of God to bring forth in the church of God. And that takes a little bit of time, a little bit of faith for you to get up close and personal with reading God's word. And commentaries do help at times. It's just a multitude of counselors. People are putting their opinions into the books and you gotta be able to read and understand and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. You know, it's like it says in the epistles. There's a lot of churches that never try the spirits, but yet the word of God says, try the spirits 
to see if they are of God. And in deliverance, when you start trying some of the spirits, boy, they manifest. And they curse God. That's enough to make you crazy. When you think the person's holier than now, and they're praising Satan. And they're Christians. What's that all about, people? So the women got there early to the sepulcher, and when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels. Those were the two that were in the shiny garments, which said that he was alive. So how many of us have had that experience? I don't think any of us. At this point, this is a one-time event, remember? His own, his own disciples didn't believe the women. And certain of them, which were with us, went to the sepulcher and found that even as the woman had said, but they saw not. Then he said unto them, O oh, fools, Jesus speaking here, and slow of hearts to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And then he went back to Moses here in the conversation. I mean, you go back and you read Mark, you read Matthew, you, and, and you'll see that this is the only gospel that's so darn specific with details. And there's a reason. God's a God of order. And everything that he gives us is for us to meditate on and understand that, man, he is God. And we're, we're supposed to trust him with our whole heart. And when Jesus was teaching, he said, the commandments are summed up in these two things. Love the Lord with your whole heart. And the hardest thing for all of us is to love one another un unconditionally. You don't think you're going to get tested? Watch what's coming. God's in control, not you or I. We just got to read our Bible and follow it. Scriptures, things concerning himself. This is about Moses. And beginning at, a, at Moses and all the prophets, that's everything you read in the Old Testament, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures. When I read that when I was younger, that's when I realized I just couldn't be a New Testament saint because God told me I got to go back and read Moses and everybody else. And when I was sitting there with Noe 20 something years ago, it was like I was hearing a foreign language. And I said, man, I need to go back and read the whole Bible and study it. And that's when my real love affair started to grow. You know, sometimes you get married. Well, we're married to Christ, people. And if you want to grow in the Lord, I'd be about reading the book. That's when your faith starts to rise. Your spirit, your spiritual rise goes to heights untold because it becomes easier to believe the word of God. It, it becomes easier to apply the word of God in your daily life. Otherwise, how can you take up your cross daily and follow him? Because without him, you can do nothing. With him, you can do all things through Christ because Christ is the word of God. It all has to come together somewhere in our hearts. And our hearts direct the path of our feet, our, our brain. When you're united with Christ, it's much easier for you to walk with him. It's not a burden. It's choose this day whom you're going to serve. Those battles are every day. I don't care who you are. I battle every day. My wife battles every day. Steve battles every day. I know Jason battles every day in Deanne because I've been close with them for a couple of years. The Word of God says, 
and they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further, but they were cons they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, break it, and gave to them. Listen, I've been eating out a lot in my life, but as a Christian, there ain't a meal I've ever sat down. Once in a blue moon, a blue moon doesn't happen often. If I let my belly get it in control of my whole being, I never forget to pray over food. Even with our families, you know, even going out to dinner, I have to correct everybody a lot of times or go to people's houses and they're, they're having parties and stuff. And I always offer to bless the food. Think about that. Where did I learn it from? The word of God. Pretty crazy. You are what you eat, people. And their eyes were open. You know, if I, I, I could share this story all the time. I go to a lot of diners over the years. I, I supplied restaurants. Very seldom I ever see families or people bow their heads and pray before they eat. Think about what I'm saying. I wish we like to go to a few places out there. We all, you know, because we never see each other. It's a, it's a once in a year or twice a year or maybe three times a year that Ernie and uh, all of them, everybody, even Jackie Clark. Last time I saw her, I was out to, with her daughter and her. We were at round the clock and we prayed over our food. And, and, you know, you remember all the different things you do when you're in the family of God. Or you go out with 10 Christians and you pray over your food and you, you sit there and look around a restaurant and you see very seldom anybody praying for food. I just want to illustrate that. When you see that, you know, those people have a relationship with God. Maybe they read their Bibles a little bit. So you got a whole restaurant full of people to pray for right then and there. Don't think you don't have divine appointments. And our rewards are great when we start doing the things the word of God shows us. Their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Then said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? Question mark. That's why it's good to have the word of God in your heart, or it's good to have a little pocket Bible with you every time you go out or a Bible in your car. It's good to have an extra Bible in case you meet someone that doesn't have a Bible and you hand them one and say, God bless you. And if you can't have a Bible like Sister Teresa does, here, here's a track, read it. Don't think tracks don't, don't ever think nothing you do for God's kingdom. Because God illustrated giving a person a cup of water. How greater is it if you give someone a track and at the end of the track, they read it and they say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I'm, I'm an older guy and I'm getting convicted more and more as I read my Bible. In season, out of season, be prepared to be a light in a dark world. Churches that are prospering should be giving the material out to the sheep. Think about what I'm saying today. And they rose up at the same hour, returned to Jerusalem, found the 11 gathered together and, them, and, and that were with them saying, and here's the women. The Lord is risen indeed and had appeared to Simon. In other words, he appeared to Peter. 
they told and they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them by breaking of bread. Breaking of bread just by being a witness of what God himself had done. Remember, last time they broke bread was at the Last Supper prior to the crucifixion. That's why Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Comes together really good because when we look at the, the finale going to verse 53, it begins again with Jesus appearing here in, in the Gospel of Luke, brothers and sisters. And then as they spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, peace be unto you. And I always go back to uh, when Jesus first sent his disciples out. If you don't think they could really understand where he was coming from, because he instructed them to go to the houses of people and let, let their peace come upon it. And if the peace don't come upon it, he says, kick the dust off your feet and move on. So here Jesus is appearing in the midst of them and he says, peace be unto you. And look what happens. They were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And Jesus in 38 says, why are you troubled? And why do your thoughts, why do these thoughts arise in your hearts? And then he shows them his hands and his feet. He says, behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me. In other words, reach out to me, touch me, check it out. This, this, this is so powerful because remember, he said, the temple, and we're the temple today. God was the temple. And he said, destroy the temple. In other words, crucify it. And I will raise it up on the third day. You know, one of the earliest things that I equated this to with the third day, when I was a baby Christian, I just wanted to, to somewhere experience what I was reading in the Bible. And I applied it in the beginning of my Christian walk as denying my flesh, presenting my body, you know, because the only thing I knew about my flesh was I like to eat. So I said to the Lord, I want to experience not eating. And, and I was a baby believer. I, I just said, you know what? That's like being dead for a few days, not having a, a great feast or a meal. Remember, I was in the restaurant business. I ate the best food and served the best restaurants in the New York area. I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. You know what it's like to just stop eating? Not having your favorite desserts. And you could have anything you want. And Jesus is talking to his disciples. The very simplicity of the gospel teachings throughout the gospels, he was telling them, touch me, see, for a spirit had not flesh and bones as you see me have. He wasn't just a figment of their imagination. He sat down and ate with them. And doubting Thomas, he said, come over here and touch me. And when he had spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they, and it says, while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, have you any meat? Now he's really going to blow them away. Meat is food. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. You don't think this affected my brain? I was in the fish business. And I'm being honest. God knows I'm honest. I hated fish. I would not eat fish the whole time I was a kid. I, it, it, between fish and liver. And today I eat both.
I read this and I said, he, he's eating fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and he did eat before that. I saw a lot of movies. I saw a lot of things before Christ, but this was, this was scripture being fulfilled here as the, the end of Luke. And I settled it in my own heart and mind. I mean, this is beyond reality. This is something that only a creator, a God could do. Come back from the dead, appear to people, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in what? The law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Now, I did read the Psalms when I first got saved, but I didn't read the Old Testament. Then opened he them under their understanding. I read that. And I said, well, I don't know about Moses. I don't know about the prophets. I read the Psalms one time. And then he says, then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So it kind of all came together in my little brain and in my heart that I had to do what the book of Timothy said study to show yourself approved and all scriptures for teaching remember i didn't go to school i'm very honest with people my only schooling is reading the bible and believing jesus is who he is it enabled me to lay hands on people and watch god heal them to cast out devils anybody that's ever been in, in and around me for any long period of time has heard the discussions the enemy says to me I'm nobody. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And I read my Bible. In fact, I read it every day. My wife can bear witness to that. You know. And we're all accountable to one another. That's what the word of God says. Iron sharpens iron. And I pray that something touches your hearts today as I'm sharing the word of God. I know, I know people say, I, I talk about a lot of things. This is part of my walk with Jesus people. I'm still alive. I announced yesterday, a few people, people are praising the Lord that I don't have a brain tumor. And I'm, I'm, I'm preaching right now. And I don't have a headache right now, people. Because I'm serious about my walk with Jesus Christ. I shall not die, but live and declare the marvelous works of the Lord. That means my testimony, what God has brought me to. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed to stand on a pulpit and say homosexuals will not enter the kingdom of God. That is the word of God. There's plenty of people following T.D. Jakes who's not preaching the truth. I'm not passive about people that are on pulpits and they're, they're speaking like demons. Listen to what he says here. And he said unto them, after he says, you're going to get the understanding of the scriptures to his disciples. He said unto them, thus it is written. Well, wait a minute. What is written? The word of God. And thus the beloved Christ to suffer and to raise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins, plural, should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. That's why it's going to end at Jerusalem when he returns. I'm the beginning and the end, the alpha 
and the Omega. And behold, he says, and ye are my witnesses of these things. He's talking to each and every one of us here. Anyone that lays their eyes upon the word of God today or yesterday or a hundred years ago. You go back and read John Wesley. I go into commentaries. I read commentaries. I don't agree with some of the commentaries. And most of you wouldn't agree with some of the commentaries if you really dig in. I wrote back to that brother yesterday because I feed sheep, God's people. Be careful with the books you're starting to read. He writes me back. Thank you, pastor. You're right. There's some error in all the things this man followed. You don't need me to understand it. Google it. Take time to use every tool God has given us today. Fast forward your life that this is the day that the Lord has made, and ye shall rejoice and be glad in it, people. For such a time as this, we have a God. We are his children. The word of God is yea and amen. All we got to do is follow him. God answers prayer. And if you're faithful to God, God is faithful to you. Listen to what he says here. 48, he says, you're my witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. So start believing the word of God. Because God's plan for man is he gave us his son. Moses said, John the Baptist said, here, how's this? John the Baptist said, you, there's going to be another. I can't, can't tie his, his latches on his sandal. But you must listen to everything he says. That should be enough to make you want to jump in your Bible every day. And spend a few minutes with the Lord. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be what? Endued with power from on high. It's really amazing. I read this many years ago. And I sat there. Tarry. I read the book of Acts. Tarry. I began to tarry. I began to read my Bible every day. I cried every day. Then I implemented prayer and fasting and giving. You know, the first fruits belong to the Lord, even though most people rob God and they wonder why they got problems. The widow's might was smarter than the people because she gave out of nothing. Well, I got demons. I got th You got stuff because you're not obeying God, period. God came to destroy the works of the devil. When are you going to believe it? And he led them out as far to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands. And after preaching all this to them, what did he do? He blessed them. That's why he's married to the backslider. Somewhere along the line, Okay, and that's why you need to read different books and study. Really get into the word of God. A curse don't come causeless. It comes because somewhere along the road, you're not paying attention to who you're supposed to be paying attention to. Even Job, the devil couldn't kill Job. Because God would not allow it. How much more does he love us that walk with him? So get up and start praising God. Thank him for the things that are going to happen before they happen. That's faith. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up to heaven. And, 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 and listen to what these people were doing at that point, the closing verses. And I'll go into the, the commentary for a moment. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Why? 
He just didn't leave them. He blessed them. Can you imagine? The creator. He spoke the truth to him at the end. And listen, listen to the, the very last verse here. It's what a transformation this is in the spirit when you, you get it. And we're continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Man, you don't think you got something every day to be excited for because you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if, if, if you're the temple of the Holy Spirit, it, don't let the negativity into your heart. Get up every day and praise God. Worship God. Something that I've learned to do for many, many years right now. Doesn't matter what the enemy throws out. God's in control. Don't ever forget his word. The stone was rolled away. The body of Jesus was gone. The woman was perplexed. Because, why? I think they were perplexed because they had forgotten what he had spoken to them. How many times do we forget when we read the word of God of the promises of God? Even today, the word of God says he gives his angels charge over us. Angels do not come to remind, of us, remind us of the word because we're indwelled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has the ministry. You're going to see that in John. When we get into the Gospel of John, it'll be pointed out to everybody. I'll save that for later on. The Word of God teaches us to yield to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Let him remind you of the promises that will encourage your heart. The promises of God. How about just trusting in God with all your heart? How about not leaning on what's going on in your brain sometimes? But pushing through because Jesus Christ said, I am God. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to deliver you. Resist the devil and he shall flee. And said, oh, the devil's just beating me up today. Then you're allowing it. I can remember back 30 years ago, people that were praising God, they weren't being tormented by the devil. They tormented the devil when they started singing and praising God. Because, you know, Jesus said to the devil, you got no part in me. Well, if you're singing and praising God, you ain't got time to think about how bad the devil's beating you up. You're praising God because every breath that you have, you can serve God with. If you get up and walk with the king, read the Bible and follow what he tells you to do. It's not woe is me. You know how many people have self-pity? And oh, I'm being attacked today. I get tired of hearing it. Where's God in their life? You are what you eat. You are what you speak. They rhyme. The Holy Spirit reminds us and he, he's here to encourage all of us. Those two men could have walked and talked for days and never gotten rid of their disappointment. Why? Because they lacked in the key that unlocks the Old Testament. Messiah must suffer and die before entering into his glory. So their hearts burned as they heard him teach the scriptures. And soon the mourners became missionaries. Aren't we all ambassadors for Jesus Christ? Spend time lifting him up in your life. Huh? Depression ain't in the game. You, you've been redeemed. You're a believer. God saved you. He didn't save us to go around witnessing woe is me to anybody in the world. Because anybody in the world has already got woe as me is going on. They're lost. They need the light coming from you to bring them into the kingdom of God. I, I get so much out of this when I read it sometimes. Because I've learned to trust in the Lord. Their hearts burned as they heard him teach scripture. The mourners became the missionaries. 
That means you and I got to be missionaries for Jesus Christ. Share the good news with others. I try to do that every day, somewhere, somehow. Every opportunity. When the doctor's secretary called me yesterday afternoon and said, Mr. Costello, we talked about Jesus for 10 minutes. I brought him into the equation. And I witnessed how both doctors gave me medicine and I went to God in prayer and I decided I'm not taking the medicine. End of story. That's faith. Somebody's got to stand. Somebody's got to witness Jesus. Because God's a spirit. You want to know he can operate when we believe. Do not, do not allow the enemy to trouble you in any way. I'd be a mess if I listened to everything people say to me. And another guy texted me the other day, didn't even open it. Oh, pastor, I want your opinion. No, read your Bible, get God's opinion. My next question, how many of us allow the Holy Spirit to teach us? It's important. He's the spirit of the father and the son. He dwells in every one of us that calls ourselves a believer. In the reading today, let's talk about receiving God's word. Their hearts were troubled, frightened, doubtful. And what did God do when he appeared? He lovingly reassured them by bringing them back to the word of God. Stuff that he talked about before he was crucified. We learned this last night in War on the Saints. We today cannot see or feel his body, but we have the Holy Spirit to make him real inside of us from the scriptures. It's not a feeling, people. We went over that. It's in War on the Saints. You don't have to believe War on the Saints. It's in the Word of God. When you read War on the Saints, it's always amplified by the scriptures that go along with the teaching. So that means someone else is expounding on that scripture in the book. That's all that book is doing. It's used by God to point us back to God. The Bible tells us they you couldn't contain all the things Christ ever did because you can't contain what the creator could do. We're not even on his scale of thought. How about that? Why did he save the thief on the, the cross? Nobody here knows. He didn't do any of the things that the word of God tells us. He just had simple faith. When your heart is troubled or frightened, you find your answer, your solace, in the word of God, scripture will comfort you, period. When your faith is weak, look for Jesus in the word. You know, one of the greatest books you can read to adjust your faith walk is the book of Romans. Been reading it for years. The first step toward peace in your life is to allow God to mold you through the word of God. In other words, fight the enemy and come into obedience to God's word because that's what rebellion is. Rebellion is not listening to God's word and doing what you want to do. Then you know you got a problem. God opens our eyes and opens our understanding when we share the word so that when he opens the scriptures to us, we may open our mouths and tell others about them. That's when the scripture doesn't return void. Because it's not your thought, it's his. We're to share that with others. He gives you and I the great commission. We read that every day. Perhaps some of you 
will start praying that in your own time. Lord, use me. I receive it. I want to be a servant. I want to be one of your, your ambassadors. I, I want to go out and bring the good news to other people. And God will use you. He'll use you with power and to get the message to other people that some people, even like you or myself, can't get to. There's no reason to be silent when you know the truth. The word of God says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. It's part of your deliverance. When we experience joyful worship, we will have little problems helping the world become joyful. I don't know, but whenever I'm singing to God and praising God, what a, what a wonderful day. Because God, God's promises, he says, come into my courts with praise and thanksgiving. Well, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Whenever two or more gather, you can come into his courts. You, you get to choose that part where Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. And he says daily. He doesn't say once a week or twice a week. Get out of that churchianity that everybody gets into. You know, when, when I went to work, I worked five days a week and sometimes overtime. How much are we really working for the kingdom of God? That's something to really chew on sometimes. We cry to God, we want our mapo, but we don't want to follow him. We don't want to take up the cross daily and be a light. And there's the whole world's dark, people. And we've been redeemed. So maybe you'll get a, a spiritual adjustment today from hearing this message. And I pray that the other people that ever hear the message will get that adjustment too. In Jesus' name. Amen.